Welcome to Everything Life and Real Estate. Let's get started with our hosts, Linda McKissick and Dana Gentry. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Everything Life and Real Estate. I'm Linda McKissick. And I'm Dana Gentry. Hey, Dana, how are you? Are you, where are you? I can never remember. Is that wallpaper from North Carolina or Kentucky? It's in Charleston. Yeah, it's going to come down though. I'm redoing it. But um, no, I've been, I've been here for a week and well, no, it's a week and a half longer because after two years of dodging it, I finally got COVID finally caught me. So I've been, uh, I've been trying to feel better, honestly, but finally feeling better, but I'm driving back to Kentucky this weekend and have lots of stuff going on next week and then and the following week after that trying to play catch up i feel like the whole month of january just is gone <laughs> i know it's uh it's so true it's going faster and faster craziness yeah. and you're uh, and and i've canceled more trips this year than i ever want to cancel again in my life i'm sick of canceling trips Me because too. somebody got covid i know it's so crazy i know i actually was just looking at my text in between us recording and um, Terry was supposed to be coming to Kentucky next week for mine and Kelly Ann's leadership retreat. And now Kelly said her whole thing's got to go virtual. And t- I mean, it's just like everything we, you know, everything you try to plan gets affected. It's wild. Yeah, it is crazy. Okay. So what are we, what are we talking about today? We, okay, uh, we have so, one of three, I think we're on number three. Yeah. So we had previously aired two of the, uh, of the two of the three things that the top, Top 200 realtors in Gary Keller's mastermind group um, said that they wanted to focus on in uh, in 2022. And the first one was how to get more uh, listings, new ways of getting listings. The second one was leverage, how to continue to have more leverage and how to um, make the same amount of money, but either doing less or through other people. And then the third one, somehow we kind of we forgot to circle back around that one. So we're going to do that one today, which was psychological tips for burnout. And we've had a lot of a lot of people, it seems like lately, just saying that after the last year or two years, their burnout is like at a all to all high time um, in just regards of, I think, just feeling like, you know, between everybody being sick and also having the busiest year in real estate probably that we've ever had. It, it seems like that that's been kind of a hot topic. So we thought we'd talk about psychological tips for burnout and maybe even how you and I avoid burnout or when we start to feel that, how do we like recorrect? Yeah. Well, I think too, emotionally, it's been emotional, you know, between COVID, totally people agree. dying, uh, buyers not getting houses. I think it's taken an emotional stress toll. And I know for myself, when adrenals, uh, my adrenals go from high stress. I start not sleeping well, yep. and then that compounds on top of itself. And so I think it's just a whole multitude of things. And it actually might be coming out differently uh, in in different people. You know, yeah. Um, mine comes out when I feel like I I can't control something. <laughs> you know, like I feel like I'm t- it's con- totally out of control. And for me, this past year, it was Jimmy getting sick with some heart issues after he had COVID. You know, I could pretty much bounce back from some major trips that we had to cancel. Like my son's best friend since he was three got married and we couldn't go to the wedding because we got COVID Montana with our family because we had COVID Uh, Christmas got canceled to go to San Diego with our kids because one of them got COVID. I mean, I'm pretty flexible and I don't really let stuff, you know, change doesn't really bother me that bad. I can pretty much pounce back to anything. But when Jimmy was sick, I really, I I had started having to go get acupuncture and some different things that I had never tried before because I just literally couldn't get over the frustration of it because I felt like there was just so much and which I know everything's out of my control. God's got everything, but it's still, you got to remind yourself even more during those kind of difficult times. So I think for me, it was, um, you know, I had to know that nothing is forever, right? Uh, This too shall pass. Right. But I also have to ask myself deep and hard questions. Is any of the imbalance coming from my decisions? In other words, am I choosing to put, you know, work before time off or running or massages Mm -hmm. or acupuncture or anything that is a de-stressor for me? So I I would say probably that that comes to mind for me right off the bat. Well, it was interesting that that that's what you started with, because I wrote down three kind of points just to think about. And my third one was actually health. 
because I know for sure that when I'm starting to get run down or when I start to feel burnout, um, I also usually at that point, I'm not taking care of myself or taking care of my health and I'm eating like crap and I'm not doing my walks in the morning or exercising or um, doing the thing like getting in the sweat bed or doing the things that make me feel healthy. Um, and I can always tell when I start to feel run down or burn out that I'm just I've gotten off of the habit of doing some of those things. And I know you and I've talked about this a ton, but even just over the last couple of years, us really being th- COVID bringing out or the pandemic bringing out two things, you know, how you think about your health and how you think about your wealth. And I think the health has been a huge one for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because when you feel good, I feel like it's less likely or uh, less easy to get burnt out or to experience that, you know, but when you aren't taking care of yourself and you feel like crap all the time health wise, then it's much easier to feel the burnout for at least it is for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, you know, I think this has been the theme. We just did our ALC retreat at my house. And, you know, that was the one topic that people wanted to talk about is, you know, how do I get back control of my life and how do I get balance? Wow. And I, you know, I think a lot of times um, and we just had a guest and I can't I don't know when she'll air, but it's a great story of if we don't get a handle on this, the gradually and suddenly that we could be facing is losing our families and losing yeah. our marriages and you know, having bad relationship with our kids. And those, yeah. those costs are just too, too high to not pay attention to this. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. Um, I wrote one of the second things I wrote down and I don't know, this is just for me, but when I start to experience burnout or I'm getting really run down, I have to go back to the things that bring me energy mm-hmm. and figure out what those things are. Like what brings me energy and joy and makes me happy And I've got to get some of that. And some of it is like certain things that I do in my role every day. Like there are certain things that give me more energy than other things. So I know that I need to go back to my calendar and look at and say and figure out what where in my calendar are all the things that bring me energy. And then other times it's what you and I were what you were texting me yesterday. I like I might just need to get to the beach for like four or five (laughs) days, just like get some sun. Yeah. (laughs) to get some energy and get back refreshed and, you know, to not feel the burnout. And then I'm re-energized when I come back. So I always try to make a list and think of the things and then figure out in my calendar, what is it that really gives me energy? Because usually also when I get burnout, it's because I'm doing a lot of things that I don't enjoy doing or they don't bring me energy. Are you like that? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I think it's, it's, it's breaking the cycle, you know, like, yeah. like there usually you're in some kind of cycle and you got to break yourself out of it. And you got to say, where's a bless, what's the best way for me to do that? And sometimes for me, it's just literally, especially we've had a lot of gloom and cold yeah. weather and it's like, okay, I got to have some sunshine. I got to go somewhere to the ocean because I noticed I was just filling my calendar and I was starting to feel like it was a routine yeah. And even though I love most of the things that are on my calendar, I just felt like there was no space for anything that gave me energy that I love doing at a high level that yeah. is also important to me. The The work was giving me energy. Most of what I was doing, a little bit of it wasn't, but most of it was. But there's still other pieces for me that I've noticed. And I noticed like for me running, if I go two days without cardio, I really start to get in a slump. And yeah. if I don't correct it by about the third day, it's a, it's kind of a downhill thing. It's like, okay, now it gets harder and harder. So I'll usually yeah. sign up for a class, yeah. you know, or commit to a friend to meet them, something that'll break me out of that. And then I'm fine. You know, real good. I always keep a sign in front of me. It says you're one workout away from a good mood. And yeah. you know, that works for me, right? Yeah. Uh, learning also works for me. me and too. it's the things that you think you don't have time to do that you need to do, uh, that you need to make, to make time for. The other thing that I noticed this past year when I was really stressed out was my sleep. I could not, I couldn't get back in my good rhythm of sleeping. And then that became a vicious circle. So I started trying to find things that would help me. What, okay, what do I need to do to get my sleep back in order? Because sleep was so important when you're so stressed out. So that's one of the things I worked on. I worked on exercise, making sure whatever I'm doing is giving me energy, get rid of the things that don't give me energy. Uh, and I would say reflection. We're not, our yeah. soul is talking to us. If this is, if this is going on, our soul is saying, wake up, here's your clues. Here's your red flags. And, you know, it's kind of like always, uh, I think Oprah used to say this and I love this saying that God 
whispers to you in the beginning and then he slaps you upside the head. It's so true. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're trying to, you got to listen to the whispers because, you yeah. know, that's telling you something that you need to. And I think we just, when we don't pay attention to it fast enough, that's when a, a real big suddenly happens and that jolts us awake. And, and usually it's not fun and it has major consequences. Yeah, totally, totally agree with that. Totally agree with that. Um, what One of the last things that I jotted down was sometimes to avoid or to get out of the burnout or a psychological tip for me is I've got to go back to, we toss this, these two words around all the time. Um, but I've got to go back to my big why or like the vision that I have or a goal that I'm trying to achieve or something that I'm trying to get to, whether it's big or small or whatever it is, because then typically that will re-energize or motivate me to get out of the burnout because I can go back to saying, OK, I really said that I was going to do this and this is the big thing I'm trying to achieve uh, for. Um, and so I got to like focus, refocus my brain back on that. Yeah. Remember why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, totally. Get get back connected to that because I think you can get so far off of it. You don't even remember what you started in the first place. Yeah. Uh, you know, another thing, I, I there was an exercise that I always teach in Fierce Conversations that's called the um, mineral rights. Yeah. And you can actually take these questions to someone else and you can get them to ask you the deep questions like, well, how long has this been going on? Yep. You know, what do you think the issue is? Is that the real issue? And give, you know, give someone else that's close to you say, look, I need because deep questions to me jolt me out of a pattern or uh, something yep. that's not working. And so even having a friend or someone that you could go to and say, hey, because I saw my problems talking it out with someone else. And so yeah. once you know that about yourself, you can have a two or three people that you could go to and say, Hey, just ask me a few deep questions about this issue. And I find that just talking it out mm -hmm. it, within a few minutes, it's like, okay, I know exactly what I need to do. I know what the problem is, know what I'm not yeah. doing, what I need to start or need to stop or whatever. Yeah, I'm definitely, that's a great point and a great idea. And I'm very much like that. And I, that's one of the things I appreciate probably the most about Adam is he is like the best question asker. I mean, he mm. gets like asked question after question after question. And so I, I love that he's like that because as soon as I get in a space like that, then he'll just start popping off the questions. And sometimes they're hard questions and I don't want to answer them. And other times I'm like, <laughs> no, I really needed that. <laughs> but it does, it really makes me think. And he does it from such like a non, um, what am I trying to say? Like he doesn't put his opinion on it. He just asks me questions to try, you know, to really help me like talk it out. And then I'm the same way as you. Like usually then after 30 minutes, I'm like, okay, I got like, no, I'm, to I'm in a totally different space. So I love that. I think having somebody that can ask you really great questions is very powerful. Yeah. And it, maybe it's your coach. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe yeah. it's your spouse. Jimmy's pretty good about that kind of stuff too. He's such a, uh, you know, stays in the logic and yeah. can see things that I can't seem to see. <laughs> and, but, but Jimmy's probably like, Adam, you better be careful how you ask it <laughs> because it's got to be like the perfect way. Don't make it sound like you're telling me what to do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and That's then and then terry will ask me and adam will hear us on a coaching call and he'll lose it he'll be like i've been trying and terry will say it and i'm like oh my gosh you're so right and adam's like i've been saying that for six months <laughs> yeah well he got it started somebody else finished brought That's it home right. and finished it That's uh right. and then another, another one i put out dana is um to not let others uh, somehow under stress i buckle back to being the person that straps it all on my back, everybody's oh, problem. Yeah. Yeah. So I wrote down not letting others make their problems yours. Because that is a huge one. <laughs> <laughs> because you're already kind of burdened and you're already, you know, in a terrible situation, but I seem to compound it. And I have to learn to go, okay, that's not my issue. I need to give that back to that person. Yeah. Because I'm not doing them any favors and I'm piling more on my already overloaded self so <laughs> to true. try to fix their problem. That's their problem. Yeah. I'm very guilty of that. <laughs> very guilty of that. Yeah, that's true. That might be just a, that might be a great question in yourself in itself is to just, if you're feeling burnout is to make a list of all the things that are causing you burnout. What's really your problem versus somebody else's problem. 
Yeah, that's that's a great point. What uh, I'm, I'm just curious, what if you can remember, what would be a couple of questions that Adam has asked you that's been kind of beneficial? If you can think oh, of any. Oh man, it usually depends on the situation, but a lot of times he'll he'll first he'll, he'll start with um, he doesn't do broad questions, so he'll say what specifically blank 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 blank. And then mm. that automatically gets me thinking. And his infamous thing is if I'm like, well, I just don't know. He always says, well, if you did know, what, w- what would you know? What would it be? And yeah. I'm like, oh, I hate when you say that. And then he'll be like, but if you did know, what would it be? And then it gets me into thinking. But I think a lot of times he always will say he he really is good at getting me to figure out like what the, what, why I'm feeling the way that I'm feeling about it. Is it like an emotional feeling or do I really have a, logical, concrete reason to feel that way. And then also he'll always say, like, is it, it is that like a story that you've created in your head? Or is, do you know that to be a hundred percent true? Like did a, a thousand percent that there is truth to that? Or is that like a story that you've created when really you don't know that they feel that way or not? Wow. That is so powerful because I have to tell you, I think so much of us doing that is our yeah. problems, honestly. Yeah. Um, and I, I I think I can't remember Katie Barron, I think is her name. She has some great books. And I remember exactly where I was running when I was listening to her books, because my son-in-law was um, struggling with cancer. And we were in this little town called Quero uh, that literally was a one horse town, seriously, as we would say in Texas, meaning if you went to the restaurant to eat you'd say do you have anything green on the menu and they said yeah jalapeno that was a chicken place you know so I was really struggling and we were having to stay there long periods of time because we wanted to be there and help and do all that but it was a real emotional mental time so I continued my running and I was listening to Katie, Katie Byron Byron that's it yeah, I, was in her book. I was trying to think too yeah Katie Byron. yeah and she has such great books about to, to ask herself is that true is that yeah. really really true yeah. and so I wrote down something when you were saying that that's a pattern that probably Adam and Jimmy both do is don't let us stay in the emotion because we don't yeah. make good decisions in the emotions. We're not thinking clearly in the emotion, but get us to logical. And the way you get people to logical is to ask logical questions. Yep. And I love the specific questions yep. because I notice when I teach fears on the first draft, when someone needs to have a hard conversation with someone to change someone's behavior, the first thing they do is they write this thing out that has so many emotional words and emotional things in it that, you yeah. know, and then once you make them say, okay, you know, let's go specifically yeah. give specific examples as if you were looking through a video camera, then they have to start taking that emotional crap out of it. And, but we all do it, right? Because sometimes these problems or these things have gone on for a while. We've got a lot of emotion around it, right? Emotion's very normal for us to have, but they don't bring us to a place to make great decisions. Yeah. Uh, and so I think that's key is to figure out what are some good logical questions that someone could ask you that would move you from emotion to logic because, uh, we make a lot of decisions from emotion and then we justify with our logic. And I don't think we make the best decisions from that place. Yeah. I just thought of something. So without like revealing, uh, I'm trying to tell it without telling the person, but, uh, 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 and I don't even know you all, you may have already talked to this person, but uh, a mutual friend of ours reached out to me and said, I'm, I'm like experiencing a lot of big decisions that I need to make in my life, the end of my career, but also affect my personal life too. And she, and she said, you know, I really believe in seeking out wise counsel and, and because that's what it says to do in the Bible. And so she said, I want to have a conversation with you. I'd like to have a conversation with Linda. And she said, I've got like four or five people I want to have a conversation with. And so we got on the phone and I, you know, was doing my best not to try to get into emotion with her um, because some of it was emotional and just ask her really, really great, great questions. And at the end, she said, see, this is what I need. I just need other people to ask me some good questions that really get me thinking from like a logical place and getting out of the emotion of, well, this might affect my family this way, or I'm feeling emotional about it or, you know, whatever, because she's like, I just needed to hear, I needed to think more logically about it. And I think sometimes we forget, like, I thought that was so cool that she did that. And I was thinking, and it just reminded me of sometimes when I'm in those situations, like sometimes I think we don't seek wise counsel enough when we should Mm -hmm. to help us move out of being emotional and move into a little bit more logical. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true because I think 
and the farther you get in the pit, the harder it is to tell yourself yeah. that's what you need, right? The more you start being secluded and alone, and that's the worst thing you can do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that you, you know, you want to put on a good front. And, and also, the more you become a leader, the fewer people you can actually do that with. Well, that's what she said. She said, I just feel like I need to, I mean, she's not even in our country. And she was like, I feel like I just need to, I, I need to get break outside of the people that I talk to every day. I need, I need people that I need some to talk to some people that are, that, you know, are people of faith that also understand the business that we're in and that I can just get some different advice from. Yeah, so true. I love it. Well, I think the main thing as we wrap up today is, you know, if you're psychologically in a funk, you know, you know yourself better than anyone. I would sit down and write out what's one or two through two or three things yeah. that tend to help change your mood quickly. Yeah, uh, because I don't think you can solve the problem from where you are mentally if you're in a, in a, if you're in a slump. So you've got to first move yourself out of that space where you are into a more clear thinking space. And then the second thing I would be is who are the people mm -hmm. that you would seek wise counsel from that you could call on? And then what are the most logical questions that someone could ask you? And you don't want to seek out people who will just agree with you, <laughs> agree with you and stay in the emotion mud with you, but you want people yeah. that will ask you great questions and help you get out of the emotion. Because I think that's where the danger is, is we start making decisions from that emotional place and they, they could create more of a mess later on. Yeah. And I, I think all those are super great. And, you know, you said something that made me think sometimes too, like if I can't get my brain into that spot of getting out of that, like I need to just do something at, like energy is really big to me. So when you said people, I was just thinking, if I get in like a burnout or a rut and I go and do something with like Josh, say my best friend, you know, Josh, like instantly he, we make each other laugh. We have fun. We get, a, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like we can get in, like I'm in a totally different mindset. And then the next day I can like start to focus on, okay, now I need to get, sometimes I think it just like, it can be environment change. It can be people change. You just need something to like what you said, break that cycle and just kind of flip the switch. And then you can get, cause I've got to be like in the right headspace before I can even think about making the list and do some of those things sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> so true. So true. Yeah. I love it. I, I think it's a, it's a real issue. Yeah. I'm not sure it's going away in 2022. Uh, so I would be putting my list together of the wise counsel I could call on. I would be asking myself, you know, when's the last time I took time for myself, whether that's to exercise, go to the ocean, go to the mountain, whatever, yeah. whatever clears your head the best. Uh, why am I even doing what I'm doing in the first place? Mm -hmm. And, you know, what am I pretending not to know? Uh, yeah. What part of this do I have my DNA in? Because it's easier to continue to do what's familiar to me than to make the change I need to make to get the balance and the mental clarity back. Yeah, totally true. I, I think this is a great topic. Yeah, me too. I agree with you. I don't know that it's going away this year. So I think being prepared is the best thing to do. Awesome. Love it. Well, remember, if you have a challenge, an opportunity, or a question that you would like Dana and I to cover on the podcast, be sure and reach out to us at info at everything, life, and real estate. And if you haven't, please hit the subscribe button. And remember, Dana has a goal of 500 five-star reviews. So right. help us out. Give us a review if you haven't done it already. And then again, if you've got a a friend in the business or a realtor that you know of that would benefit from our conversations or someone that you believe would be a great guest. Be sure and uh, reach out to us at info at everything life and real estate to let us know that guest name and we'll do our best to get them on here. So Dana, thanks a bunch. Been a great uh, conversation as usual and Absolutely. you and I will see each other next week. Sounds good. See you then. Be sure to subscribe for more business strategies and tactics to inspire you to live an abundant real estate life. Don't forget to rate and review so we can bring you the best content. Find this and other valuable information at everythinglifeandrealestate.com.